Hello, welcome. Today we're gonna to talk about the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. We recently took in trade. We took this in trade for a newer Tesla. Uh, one awesome battery electric vehicle. We do uh, really well with pre-owned Teslas here at Infinity of Tacoma. We have a very big pre-owned business and sometimes we sell five to up to close to 15 EVs, mostly Teslas every month. Uh, so they're a big part of our business. We've had hundreds of them over the last couple of years. I own a Tesla myself. I have a 2019 Model 3. I also have gas cars. I also have an Infinity. I have love for all cars. I'm a career car guy, but once I got behind the wheel of a Tesla, experienced the autopilot, the smoothness of it, uh, the uh, you know how awesome it is just to charge uh, the battery at your house, not having to go to a gas station, the money you save on gas versus electricity, on electricity versus gas, the money you save on maintenance. I'm sold hook, line, and sinker. Uh, but you know, talking with customers, friends, and family. One of the biggest concerns on any EV is the battery because obviously that's the biggest maintenance item or not maintenance item but biggest expense uh, on an EV is replacing a bad battery. Uh, this one has 125,002 miles on it. It's a 2020 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. Uh, the EPA rating when brand new is uh, about a fully charged range of 250 miles but Tesla tends to be a little bit more optimistic as far as their range goes. Uh, that's just something we all have to adjust to. And I think it's not Tesla, I think it's EVs in general can sometimes be optimistic. Basically you need, you know, perfect scenario temperature type of driving to really uh, max, you know, get that close to that EPA range. Uh, EVs have a tendency to really go through range a lot faster, you know, going 70 miles on a highway. They tend to be a little bit more efficient, like around the town driving, things like that. Uh, cold weather can also affect the range. Um, and then there will be, uh, uh, there is, uh, you know, batteries degrade over time. Uh, a battery can only be, you know, charged and discharged so many times before it starts to lose its capacity. Uh, but Teslas aren't new. I mean, uh, they've been, you know, manufacturing Teslas starting with the Roadster since uh, the late, uh, you know, 2008, 2010. Uh, the first Model S came out in 2013. Uh, the first Model 3, the 2017 model year. So we're starting to see Teslas with higher miles on them. This is actually our second Tesla that we've had with over 100,000 miles that came in trade. The first one was a Model S. So uh, we have this thing charged uh, to, looks about 95% right now, if we look here. And it's showing a fully charged range of 206 miles, which I don't think is too bad, considering this has 125,000 miles on it. We're looking at maybe about one to 2% battery degradation per year on average, but this one has a lot more uh, miles than most 2020 Teslas. Usually most 2020 Teslas have about 40, 50,000 miles. Uh, this one has 125,000 miles. So this has about eight years of uh, use on it, you know, over four years. So kind of double the mileage versus most average Tesla owners. It's out of warranty. Uh, the battery, battery warranty is eight years, 100,000 miles on this one. Um, someone, you know, drove this one a lot, but we have a fully charged range of 206 miles, which isn't bad at all. Like uh, my Tesla is a year older. It's a 2019 Model 3 Standard Range Plus. The EPA uh, fully charged rating is about 10 miles lower, 240 miles on a 19 versus 250 miles for 2020 Standard Range Plus like this one. And when I fully charge mine to 100%, it's about 220 miles. So 206 miles of 125,000 miles versus 250 fully charged, that seems about right. Uh, so we can see that you know battery, battery degradation is minimal. And the other thing to think about is what did we have to do when we put this through our service department? I can tell you uh, about 80% of the cars that we take in trade with 125,000 miles, they're not even gonna make it through the shop. We're just gonna send them straight to the auction because we deal more of Highline cars. We're a luxury dealership. We're not gonna sell leaky old you know, jalopies at our store. We're gonna just send those to the auction. Uh, and sometimes we do have a nicer European car, or whatever, Mercedes, you know, BMW, uh, you know, Lexus, uh, you know, a gas car that's got, you know, over 100,000 miles on. I'm like, oh, well, let's put it through the shop and see what it needs. But I can tell you a lot of times, especially with, you know, European cars, we start to see oil leaks around 70, 80,000 miles, which can start off as seepage. But once we get to 125,000 miles, they can start turning into serious leaks, coolant leaks, uh, the steering racks can leak. Uh, the rear main engine seal. If the vehicle has turbos, they can start leaking. Leaks can come from a lot of places in the ice car. You can have, uh, you know, check engine lights because you have issues with the emission control system. Uh, catalytic converters can go bad. There are a whole uh, bunch of issues. So usually, uh, you know, when I'm putting a 125,000 mile car through uh, our shop, you know, usually it's going to have about a four, five thousand dollar estimate just to do maintenance items, fix oil leaks. Uh, maybe it needs brakes. Brakes on a you know a high end car just for front pads and rotors could be you know 1500 2000 dollars like on a fancy like Audi RS5 
or you know a, a high performance Lexus with a little bit more uh, sporty brakes. Uh, you know, so brakes can be it can be you know fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars for front and rear brakes. With regenerative braking, these brakes aren't even getting close. These brakes will probably go past two hundred thousand miles. Really, the only thing that this needed was tires, maybe wiper blades, maybe a new cabin filter. So you know, think about all the maintenance that you had if you had an ICE car over one hundred twenty-five thousand miles. If you went to the service department and you did every single recommended service by a service department, like at a luxury car store, a BMW, Mercedes. You know, oh, you have to do a 30k service. How much is that? Oh, you need to do, uh, you know, uh, you have to do a, a, a fuel system treatment. Up, oh, it's time, you know, you do an all-wheel drive service. You got to replace the, you know, differential oil in the front and rear differential. Things like that. It all adds up. So, you know, on most ICE cars, if you follow the maintenance schedule over 125,000 miles, you're going to dish out 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars in maintenance. I think that's probably. You know, not even close to what the previous owner or owner spent on this one. <laughs> For maintenance, what are you going to do? It's just tires, wiper blades, and obviously the biggest maintenance item, well not maintenance item, but repair, would be the battery. The battery is fine in this one, but you know, how much does it cost? You know, how long do these batteries last? Uh, you know, like anything, you know, batteries do go bad in uh, electric cars, but I think it's a lot less frequent than people think. Just like engines go bad in gas cars, you know, engines aren't really designed to be replaced or designed to last the service life of a vehicle, but sometimes they pr prematurely go bad. That can be the case with EVs, but I think most of the time uh, these batteries are robust. I mean, I think they could go 200, 300,000 miles uh, before you have some serious issues. And that's just not based on me. That's based on, you know, uh, what Tesla says, and that's based off of, you know, owners. Uh, there's a Tesla high mileage club where you can see people with their Model S's with 300,000 miles. There's one Model S with a million miles on it. That one's been, I think, through a, a couple, one or two sets of batteries, but it's still amazing that the vehicle is still running and driving and looking pretty good with close to a million miles on it. Uh, you know, an EV has only dozens of moving parts. When you have an internal combustion engine powered vehicle, you have thousands of moving parts, and then you have a complex emission control system, exhaust system, catalytic converters, fuel system, all these wires and piping and stuff like that, where you just have electric motors and batteries it's far simpler on an EV and I think you know there's a lot of misinformation out there I think there's people that are probably scared of EVs and you know uh, you know a lot of car manufacturers that are probably scared of EVs because they see it as a threat uh, to their business model and profitability and uh, you know their life <laughs> so I think there's a lot of misinformation out there but I think uh, if you actually look at the data you know you can see that uh, EVs tend to be lower maintenance uh, they tend to cost less to own, uh, you know, obviously it's a no-brainer, you know, what it costs to charge it versus, you know, paying the equivalent for gas. And then let's talk about the fire risk. I mean, uh, when I post, uh, you know, videos and stuff on our Facebook page, people, you know, send pictures of Tesla's on fire or, you know, oh, better bring a fire extinguisher because there's more, you know, disinformation about there, out there that, you know, electric vehicles uh, catch fire um, a lot more than gas cars, which is completely the opposite. If you actually look at the data, EVs actually catch on fire less frequently than gas cars. I mean, think about it. You know, take a cup of gasoline and take a nine volt battery and a lighter. What do you, what do you, which one do you think is gonna be easier to catch on fire? Don't do it really, but you know, gas is pretty flammable. <laughs> flammable. Uh, you know, gas cars, you know, hundreds if not thousands of gas cars catch on fire every day, but it's not newsworthy because no one really cares. But if a Tesla catches on fire, obviously it's front page news. So that's what people focus on. Um, so yeah, EV fire risk is also a lot lower uh, based off the research I've seen than a gas car. Okay, so that's my long winded spiel, uh, you know, on this high mileage Tesla and all that information. So let's just do a regular rock around and just talk about the amazingness of a, a Tesla. Aside from being high miles, this thing's in really nice shape. Inside and out, you have these very comfortable, supportive, a zero G seats um, and this thing has benefited even though this is a 125,000 mile Tesla the infotainment system has benefited through lots of updates and improvements they've added you know new uh, games and uh, apps and stuff like that they've added new features to the toy box to keep this vehicle relevant they've uh, upgraded the display the functionality and then you know aside from you know the money you'll save on maintenance and gas let's talk about safety uh, the Model 3 is one of the safest vehicles ever made. <laughs> when the NHTSA tested the Model 3, it's one of the lowest probabilities of uh, injury in an accident versus any other vehicle they've ever tested in their whole entire history. <laughs> so the more we look at these vehicles, 
and we uh, kind of disprove all the disinformation out there, there's a lot, we can see that they're very reliable, great vehicles. This one's got four brand new tires on it. Uh, they're fun to drive. I mean, you have zero vibration from a running engine. There's only one gear, there isn't a regular transmission. So the power delivery is very smooth and linear. Lots of fun to drive. We also have the upgraded wheel and tire package. I really like the minimalist styling of the Model 3. We have a frunk, which uh, provides extra cargo space. It's also a safety feature. You have a crumple zone 60% larger than a gas car since there's no engine here. So you have all this space to absorb uh, crash energy in a frontal collision. And another race in the hole too with Teslas is not just the amazing autopilot, which is a traffic aware cruise control, which you're going to love and make your life so much easier uh, driving. And the autopilot just doesn't work on the uh, on the highway. It works on regular roads too, even though it's mostly designed for the highway. I can I use it on back roads. You just have to you know pay extra attention and understand it's not full self driving. There are limitations to it. Then you have the amazing Tesla app. Uh, you can warm up your car. You can defrost it without even getting in it. You can do it, you know, get, as soon as you get out of the shower, you can start warming up your car. You can see the location. You can find charging. You can pull up uh, all sorts of awesome stuff. You can get uh, uh, charging stats and stuff like that. Uh, so the Tesla app is pretty amazing. Uh, it's almost Apple-esque. Uh, you know, Tesla has a lot of software engineers creating awesome software for not just the app, but also for the, you know, the vehicle, uh, the vehicle, the vehicle system, the screen, the functionality, it's amazing. Well, really cool. Here's a beautiful example of a high mileage Model 3. If you're curious how well they hold up with past 100,000 miles, this is a great example. Oh, and let's talk about uh, one last thing is what would it cost to replace the battery uh, if the battery did go bad on this one? Because, you know, obviously that's in the back of your mind of 125,000 miles. You know, you buy any car, a gas car, any car, of 125,000 miles, it's, it's almost like being like an 80 year old person, right? You know, you might be a fine and dandy 80 year old person and healthy, but you might uh, pass away in your sleep. <laughs> and you know, you go, if they take you to the coroner, you're gonna say, you know, that probably died of natural causes. Uh, you know, because when you get to that age, you get to a certain age, you know, things can start going wrong at any time. So if you have a 125,000 mile gas car, even though it runs perfectly, at per perfect maintenance history, it's an older vehicle. It's the equivalent of an 80 year old person you know, even though it's healthy and most likely things aren't going to go wrong, they can go wrong. So yeah, you know, this battery could go bad in a year. It could go bad in uh, uh, 10,000 miles from now. I don't know for sure, but that's a trade-off of, you know, buying a, a, a cheaper, you know, high mileage vehicle versus buying a newer Model 3 or a brand new one, you know, for, you know, $35,000, $40,000. So that's kind of the trade-off. You know, you have that risk of, uh, you know, having to take on a big, you know, Maintenance, you know, take on a big repair like replacing a battery and engine. But you know, guess what? Replacing an engine on a car can be expensive too. I work at an Infinity dealership. We have had Infinities with bad engines and used engines at an Infinity dealership at you know $170 labor rate, $180 labor rate. It can be you know ten, twelve thousand dollars for a used engine, eighteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars for a brand new engine, depending on what you're looking at. So engines can be just as much to replace as batteries. So there is a good example of recently of uh, someone who was an Uber driver and he really kind of pushed this test to the limit. He put 100,000 miles in one year on his Model 3 standard range plus some of this. Uh, you know, and I think he did things that probably led to a premature battery failure. Like uh, Tesla recommends for daily use, he only charges to 80%. He charged this to 100% and he supercharged this twice a day. So he did high speed charging twice a day. So he basically, you know, did eight years worth of driving in one year. And yeah, his battery was toast. Uh, but Tesla worked with him and they replaced it. His was a standard range plus, some of this. Here they replaced his battery with not a new one, but a refurbished one. And it was about $9,000, which I, actually surprisingly, that's, that's not too bad. Uh, you know, I would think it would be $20,000. Maybe Tesla gave him a break because he was, you know, up, upset about the situation and trying to, you know, make a customer happy. I don't know the details of it, but uh, Kim Java, you can check out our YouTube page and you can find information that interview with that Uber driver. Uh, and, uh, you know, the things that he had to deal with when his Tesla uh, battery went bad in his. Well, there you have it. A little bit of a long-winded spiel, but, uh, you know, there's so much to talk about these cars, and we don't have any examples uh, too often of 125,000 miles like this one, so there's definitely a lot to talk about. I wanted to kind of talk about a lot of the disinformation out there that, you know, people hear. I'm sure if you've heard about EVs and Teslas, and we can see that it's not all true. <laughs> Most of it's not. 
Well, thanks for taking the time today to watch this video. Hopefully see you soon and have a wonderful day.